right, hi everybody. As you can see, I'm in an actual classroom, not in my uh, office at home. Uh, I'm currently in round 307, and this is a room that I did the, the preliminary test of the Zoom room previously that I am back in to kind of give you a demo of uh, what it's like, and you guys can ask some actual questions as, as I'm in here, uh, and just kind of do a repeat of what happened, but just you guys get to ask actual questions this time. Um, give me one second. We are, I'm having some technical difficulties in the speaker setup. Jason, while you're kind of um, fixing your your yep. Um, settings. Uh, someone in the chat, Laura in the chat, asked uh, if you're wearing a mic by any chance? Because I am uh, not wearing a mic. We can so hear you pretty masked. well. <laughs> I am masked, and part of the things about the Zoom room is in the ceilings. Um, they have omnidirectional microphones in in the uh, in the ceilings, and so I am literally just sitting in the chair. I will say I am using my teacher voice, um, so I'm speaking slightly louder than I normally would, but I am not yelling. Um, and so you can see what it's uh, kind of what it's like. Um, and so that's how the sound picks up. And I'm going to change my camera here. And I do that on Zoom. And so there's two cameras. You can see one in the screen right now, um, the front mounted camera in the room. That, and then there's a back mounted camera, and I'm going to switch to the front mounted camera right now. So this is what the room looks like. You can see I'm going to walk around, and you guys should be able to relatively hear me. Okay. Can I get any kind of visual cue that I'm coming in? Thank you. Yep. Yeah, we can hear you. Up. And so, once again, I'm still talking. I'm not yelling. I am at least talking a little bit louder. Um, so, uh, Laura wants to know what it is without a teacher voice. So, this would be me talking in what I would consider a semi-normal voice. Um, and this is how I would sound. So, I don't know how well it clear comes out in clarity. I'm just very used to whenever I walk into the classroom and I'm giving a presentation, I switch to my teacher voice because, you know, you have to have, be able to project. Uh, do students get to switch to view? No, instructors switch the view. Um, it's just like switching cameras on Zoom in general. Um, so so um, if I want to change the camera here I, and what camera I'm using, I do that as an instructor because Zoom can only accept one camera input at a time. So right now we're using the front mounted camera. I'm going to switch to the back mounted camera again. And so the reason I'm doing that is um, there's a little terminal on the teacher panel right here. And that gives me the ability to control the rear mounted camera because it is motion capable. In all of them, there will be some presets. And so I can change the camera. So I'm going to go preset one, and it goes over and zooms in on that part of the whiteboard. If I switch, I hit preset two, it zooms and goes to that part of the whiteboard. So then I can say here and write on the whiteboard for you all to see. Um, you got to write slightly bigger than you normally would. And as you, if you guys watched the whole video last time, one of the things that we kind of discovered is blue and black markers are the ones that work the best. Um, green and red came in kind of eh. And really you should use green and red anyway for red, uh, red green, colorblind people. New markers work the best too. Yes, always new markers. Really, I would suggest any street teacher worth their salt, go out, and, any instructor worth their salt, go out and buy a new packet of Expo markers and then hoard them yourselves. And uh, Jason, we had a good question from Angela about um, 
if the university has thought about addressing issues of students not wanting to appear in uh, recordings or if you have any recommendations for that um, as well. Um, you can work with the student to see if there's areas in the room where they won't be recorded. Um, we, there was recommendations sent out from Terry Winters, who is part of IT for the University of New Hampshire system, who sent out wording that would be included in your syllabus about the possibility of being recorded. Let me switch my views back again. Um, so just in case, you know, if you are plan on recording your lectures or for Zoom, then you need to make your students aware and include that language in the uh, in your syllabus. I do not believe there's going to be a general blanket waiver that's going to be sent out to students. Uh, what about blackboards? I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't have a blackboard to test it on. This is the room that's the most complete at the moment. So this is the one that we have to test it on at the moment. Um, so going on with the rear mounted camera, right now I'm on a fixed view of the terminal. And before I forget, we are working to preset all the Zoom rooms with the Zoom cameras to be functioning, you know, to have preset areas on the whiteboard to focus in on. Uh, so like I talked about, you know, this one has two preset locations, one on one side of the board, and then another on the other side of the board. And then on top of that, you can set the camera to a couple different um, items. Right now, I'm in a wide angle view. I can do this and set it into auto tracking. So that as I move, it tracks me. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Nick. No. So I can walk around, walk around the room for all of you guys who are walkers and it still relatively tracks you. Um, and then the last one is a type view of the instructor term. And so those are the three presets it has for the camera that aren't on the, uh, that aren't on specifically whiteboards. Um, additionally, on top of that, there is a control on it, a touch sensitive control where I can touch the camera and move it around myself. So if I really wanted to get on a certain type area of the board that's not capturing that well, I can do it and then zoom in and out. Uh, Jesse asked what I'm using to interact with the presets. There is a terminal. Let's see if I can find it on here. This is fun. Am I going to go the right way? Nope. Hey, there's me. So you can see right here, there it is. There's a little, little terminal that I'm touching. Um, unfortunately, there's no way I can get a zoomed in on version of this, but it's a, a panel that has pretty clear buttons on what it, what it does. And so in the center is where I can swipe to move the camera. And then over the left-hand side are the three presets for the camera. And then across the top are the presets for the whiteboard. It might be worth mentioning to folks as well that at University Days, um, I think on the Monday of University Days, which is August 17th, is that right, Jason? Yes. 17th, I think. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, Jason's going to be running um, session a session all day about the Zoom-enabled uh, rooms um, okay. from 9 to 12 and 1 to 5. And they're going to be drop-ins. They're going to be all day on that Monday. Um, so this will be that'll be a good opportunity to see actually the room and how things are going to work. Um, but this is kind of just our initial run through with folks being able to actually see the room at we're, university days. We're also trying to see uh, trying. To, I'm also trying to get set up uh, booking appointments so you can come in and get hands on with with the equipment. Um, I'm just trying to make sure, trying to get a figure out an easy way to actually do scheduling and booking um, so I don't have everybody try to email me at once. Um, but that is our plan. I'm, please, I'm crossing my fingers. Do not send me in your emails if it doesn't happen starting next week. But I'm trying to get it set up to start it next week where I will be, I will block out time. I will come in here and you can get hands on um, with um, 
using the using the software and hardware. Uh, Jessica, uh, uh, Laura asks, is this a new part of the console? Yes, these are, these are Crestron panels and they're being added new to the, um, to the item, to the teacher terminal. Um, and then Jessica asks, can you zoom on the camera in the back? No, that is a fixed camera. It is just a blanket view. There's, you can't control it at all. Uh, can I see what screen sharing looks like? Yes, George, I'll cover that in a, in a couple minutes. Um, and then Katie, can we do that in our classrooms or on our own? Um, not as a, I'm gonna say no right now, Katie, just because not all the classrooms are done and they're still finalizing and tweaking things. Um, 307 is the one that's farthest along. And so that right now, that would be, you know, it's not that we don't want you and trying to impede you guys from getting practice on your job. It's just we wanna make sure everything is set as, and available as they work on it. And so that's why we're doing it with the, with the booking system. Um, any other questions before I kind of move forward? Okay. Um, screen sharing, and then actually the other thing I forgot, let's see if we can see it on the camera here. There is a confidence monitor, is what they're generally called. If you look in the top corner, you can kind of see Hannah on the screen in the back as she waves, you have a confidence monitor. And so whatever, whatever ever appears on the screen on your monitor here also appears on the monitor in the back. So you're not always having to look down at your screen if you wanna see your slideshow or whatever. Um, so that's a nice feature, a uh, useful feature to have. Screen sharing functions exactly the same like it is on Zoom. So if I share my screen, I'm gonna say I'm gonna share my actual screen so you can see my calendar or my uh, um, Zoom, uh, Teams chat or whatever. So if I go to, let's open up PowerPoint. Of course, this one's not installed. I'm installed on here. So let's go to my waffle. And so I can open up PowerPoint. and then share it like normal. Let's go to slideshow from the beginning. And so it just functions just like normally. You guys should be seeing my slideshow and I can run through it. The benefit of this is that if you look at the window by camera view, you can still see the confidence monitor in the back. So you can see like, you know, the actual PowerPoint is up there and I can look up there to see it. So screen sharing functions exactly the same way with the Zoom room as it does in a regular Zoom meeting. Is this also being projected to the front? Yes, it is also projected to the front. Um, so if I switch my camera here, I don't know if I can switch my camera while I'm doing this. Oh, there we go. You can see the camp, you can see the, uh, oh, other way, other way. The projector right there that projects whatever is on my screen to the projector up front also. So you get your normal projector in the front for your students, a confidence monitor in the back for you to see everything and everything else just kind of functions like a regular Zoom in your screen share and it's just a matter of choosing what camera you want to be on. So like right now, I'm on the rear mounted camera that is movable so you can see, so I can adjust it so I can show you the projector and then I can switch back to the normal uh, item or switch it back to the tight view of the instructor terminal. So it's not that hard. I think most people would be able to pick it up relatively quickly. It's just a matter of coming in and getting a little bit of hands-on experience to see what the controls look like and, and how you use it. So any questions about the Zoom cameras or the Zoom rooms? Jesse, go for it. Um, is this the standard setup for all the classrooms that are labeled as like Zoom enabled classroom? 
Yes, this is the standard setup for a Zoom enabled classroom. All right, and then you'll cover the difference in what the OWL means and? Yes. Okay, great, fantastic. Um, Allie is asking, can the camera see things that we have on a smart board? Um, as far as I know, a smart board is really just to consider an extension of a monitor in your, in your system. Um, and so basically, when you're sharing on a smart board, most often you have it as your smart board is uh, mirroring what's on your regular desktop. And so in theory, when you share your screen on Zoom, you'll share the same thing that you have on a smart board. Uh, so you should be able to same thing. I haven't, this is theoretical, I haven't tested it with a smart board, but I don't see why that would, wouldn't work per se. And it's the second time I've answered that question in three days. You're not the only person who's thinking about that, Ali. Um, how clear are the bushes of mass students sitting at the tables? Um, so I can give you a, a shot or a, a sample of that. So I'm going to go sit kind of in a corner of the room. And I'm not using my teacher voice. I'm using the voice of a student who would talk really softly. How well can you hear me? It's surprisingly clear. Surprisingly well? Yeah. What if I talk like this? Even that. Okay. So that is the example. Of <laughs> Laura says it's creepily clear. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's how in the Zoom room, that's how well the microphone picks up. Um, and Wendy had a question, I don't want it to get lost, but um, about showing DVDs um, from the podium, if that is a possibility. Um, I don't believe so. All right, wait. Wendy, do you want to unmute and, and let's talk about that for a second? Okay, I have videos that I show in class that are on DVDs. I even have some old VCR ones. Yeah. Um, and I've actually been in and looked at the new podiums in the classroom across the hall from me and didn't see a DVD player there. And that's a problem because they're not stuff that's available online. Yes, I don't believe this terminal has a DVD player. Um, there is a still an old TV monitor and a DVD VCR player sitting on a cart in the room. So I hope they leave that there. Okay. Um, why don't you email me and we can kind of go down that road a little bit. Um, that is one thing some of, you, uh, some of you guys will have to adjust to. Um, about showing videos in class. Um, let's give this a shot real fast because I don't know how well YouTube videos play on a, uh, on a Zoom screen. I usually don't recommend it and Wendy's shaking her head like I'm talking stupid stuff. They're not YouTube or anything. They're real yeah. typical DVDs I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's just try something for giggles real fast. I'm gonna share my screen. And then let's go to YouTube and try sharing a YouTube video. That sounds interesting. Why is saffron so expensive? Yes, I want to know that. Real saffron can cost you over ten thousand dollars per kilogram. So, are you guys? I don't assume you're hearing any so audio through thousands room. of years as a spice, a okay. dye, and a medicine. You need over one hundred and fifty flowers to make just one gram of saffron. And the stuff you have at home in the cupboard could well be fake. How well is it coming through? What makes this spice so expensive? Okay. I think what we're hearing is through your speakers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's a little bit um, distorted. But there's an ability, you have the ability to share your sound as well as your screen, and that might be a better option, right? I don't think Zoom can share your, your system sounds. I, I think it actually can. So yeah. um, I know Martha and I have done it actually for um, game nights. 
Okay. And it's when you when you share your screen, it asks you if you also want to share system sound. Um, so it's like an option when you when you click share. That's, oh, you're right. Okay, let's try this again then. See, I learn new things every day. Yep, share computer sound. So let's try this one more time. Saffron is the red stigma of the crocus sativus. Each crocus has three small stigmas that have to be picked carefully by hand. This minuscule harvest means that the okay. amount... So, you could in theory still do that and share your system sound. Laura says that was amazingly different. Awesome. Um, so yeah, you have to make sure you click on the share system sound if you want to try to play a YouTube video through the, um, through the speaker, uh, through, through Zoom. Nice shout, Hannah. Um, wonder if there's been any discussion attempt to test with more than one person there. If you can hear a whisper that clearly, I wonder if the class will be have to be dead silent in order for zooming students to be able to hear. Um, there hasn't been, we just haven't had the opportunity to test something like that yet, Katie. This classroom just came online last the, the end of the week last week on Friday, so we haven't got to the point where we can where we can have tried to test it with um, multiple people in it. Um, that is a good question. We just don't know at, the, at this point. And auto captioning, Zoom doesn't do auto captioning on a share. Uh, you would have to, you can designate someone as a captioner, but I don't think that would be super feasible. And if you were uh, recording the Zoom, um, and you put it up on Kaltura, there's some options for captioning through Kaltura, um, but it, it, it would take a little bit of extra work to caption. Yes, when you, when you do record to the cloud and the, cloud, the recording gets transferred into Kaltura, Kaltura does do captioning. It's not 100%, you do have, you know, especially I would imagine when I did my creepy voice talk, as Laura put it, the captioning on that one would probably be slightly off. Um, so you would have to go in and check the caption for it to be accurate. Uh, so students are in the back and are chatting. Will they be recorded, um, heard by remote viewers? It appears to be. Um, you know, it seems like everyone can hear hear me throughout the class. So it uh, seems like it's uh, pretty clear. So side conversations might have to be kept minimal. You know, and we can test that further as we proceed further and get more people in to try to do a, a better test. Any other questions about using the Zoom capable room? All right, I'm gonna make a switch real fast. Hi, everybody. Oh. All right, let's try that again. Okay. So the only reason why you had the feedback problem is because I'm also in the room with an Al camera which you can see what I'm using here on another person logged in for the Zoom, for the Zoom meeting. And so um, the Al camera is a extension that works on, you know, is a camera that will be mounted on a tripod that you can have in your classroom. Um, you can kind of see it has a panoramic view at the top. You have to, Jessica, or you have to unpin or switch to speaker view. So you got to unpin me and go to the other Jason Ninos in the room. Oh yeah, good point. I, I uh, had folks pin um, Jason's video, but Jason has switched to another machine. 
So if you right click, you can unpin the old JSON and pin the new one or just switch to speaker view. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry. Um, so I'm on the owl camera now. Um, you can see it has the panoramic view at the top and then a close in view of me. And so in theory, what's supposed to happen as I'm using this is it has an omnidirectional microphone and it should, in a second, auto track over to the person talking. And so you can see it switched over to me and it finally picked up where I'm at in the classroom. This is me talking in my normal voice. So you can see how well you can hear me. Um, Angela is asking, does it not always show both views like this? You can connect to it by an app and disable the panoramic view um, so that it would only show a regular view. The owl doesn't pick up the sound as well. Yeah, um, the owl is more set up, was more set up to be in a uh, conference table and not necessarily like a like classroom. Um, and so it would be prudent of you when you're working with the, in an owl classroom to be cognizant of that and repeat questions and answers that your students might um, respond with. Yes, as Hannah talked about, make sure if you have multiple Zoom things with cameras and audio, one of them is muted. Um, Jason, are there classrooms that have owls but no Zoom? Like the cameras aren't in the ceiling, like. Yes, that is. It's either it is either one or the other. It's never. It's not going to be both like this. Okay. I just I okay. stole an out camera for um, testing like this to demonstrate today. Normally, as you saw from the list, it's either a Zoom enabled classroom or an owl classroom. Jesse. Um, on the spreadsheet, if it said BYOD, is that bring your own device? Like you need to bring in your own computer to hook up to connect with an owl? I am not sure. Okay. Because uh, it's a classroom that. I'm teaching in, so I was like, I need to know what that BYOD means. <laughs> um, I will check into that and have someone send a follow up. I am not completely sure. Okay, thank you. Can I owl view the Zoom screen? Yes, I assume, Angela, you're talking about sharing your screen. Yeah, that sharing your screen is universal across Zoom, and that's irregardless of what camera you have connected to it. You can always share your screen whether you have a camera or not. Do you understand that, Angela? Okay. Um, Jason, so yeah. did I ask a question? No. <laughs> I wasn't sure if we were supposed to type it. I'm sorry I came in late. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to be teaching online, but I have this fantasy of throughout the semester having my students go to a room where I could be a big head on a screen watching them do some interactive activities. Is that crazy? <laughs> yes. So I could be home and they could be doing some meetings if, if they, you know, for a special project that we're working on this semester. Um, I assume if you're teaching online, you don't have a designated class space then, correct? I don't know how that works. I don't know if they've taken away my class. I just got approved last week. Okay. Uh, I would imagine if you're teaching online, you do not have a designated class space. Um, and so the biggest impediment to that would be finding a place for them to congregate around in order to um, facilitate in that. And there's no way of finding out if there's a room they could meet in that has technology? Um, I don't know who you reach out to to answer that question, unfortunately. Okay. I think my sense is too, is that um, these rooms are limited in number. Is that accurate, uh, Jason? Yeah, every classroom on campus is not going to be Zoom or out capable. Uh, the list that you saw that was sent out by uh, Anne have the ones that are that are Zoom and out capable. And I think um, as we're calling the out capable rooms, those are nested rooms. And then we are going to have some owls that are, as we're being put it, that can be in flight, that can be um, 
used in cam in rooms that aren't permanently fixed with an owl or permanently fixed with an owl or a zoom or the zoom capable of technology. Um, Jessica just brought up a good point that um, AOMs might know a little bit more about how to reserve these rooms and if that is even possible. So for folks yeah. just watching the video later on, um, hey, thank you. AOMs yeah. might be. And I'm hoping maybe in the library there'll be some tech capable rooms I, that could be reserved. I don't know if that's true or not, but one would hope. I, yeah, I don't know and I don't know if this is possible. So, but in theory, like what could possibly happen is um, an owl camera might be able to be checked out and they can go into the uh, 114 in the back there and have it set up and do something like that. That is all theoretical. Do not hold me to that. Because I am not sure who has the ability or permission to check out an owl camera, uh, whether students can check out. I'm guessing no, but I don't know if decisions like that has been made or even considered with me. All right, any other questions? I was kind of wondering, Jason, um, you are really great at kind of um, checking chat and you know keeping tabs on people in the Zoom room. Um, what's your sense of if, if that is an easy process to learn, kind of keeping track of all of those kind of areas that students could be talking to you on? Um, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, you really got to be cognizant of the reason why I'm able to do that is I've done this several, 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 several times. Um, when I was doing, when we transitioned from Cam uh, from Blackboard to Canvas at Arizona State, I ran um, the initial training sessions to get people off the ground in that transition. And I trained 325 people in the span of a month and a half. And the reason I was able to do that is because we ran meetings and I would have some people come in person and share my screen over Zoom and have people um, chat on Zoom. And so I got really good at being able to function and look at, you know, think about people who are in the class and think about and make sure I check my chat. Um, so with that being said, like Ali said, the best, one of your best things to do is have someone in the room who has a laptop monitor the chat for you and can ask that question. Um, the other thing that would be helpful is, and to be cognizant of, especially in the, like I said, in the non zoom enabled rooms with the out cameras, be, uh, repeat questions that students pose or responses that students give. Um, that's one thing I had to get used to. I just had a simple omnidirectional microphone, uh, that I had bought for myself that I had mounted on a monitor when I was doing my trainings. And so they could hear me fine but they couldn't hear people in the room. And so whenever someone in a room asked a question, I had to make sure to repeat that question in order for the people on Zoom uh, to hear. Um, so, you know, it takes time. If you train yourself to do it, yes, you can start being cognizant of both the, of the chat and your, you know, people in the class and your presentation. You just got to be really cognizant of in order to learn that skill set. I really like the idea that Ali shared of having a student do that. <laughs> I think that's what I would go for. <laughs> Multitasking is not my not my strength. <laughs> it took me like two weeks of meetings, like three three meetings a week, before I finally got it comfortable doing it on a regular basis. Other questions? Yes, it is still possible to use the breakout room feature. That feature is inherent in Zoom. And so if we wanted to do a breakout, I would just do as normal and do a breakout room. Which, so the mic, stay, the mic would say whatever room that the instructor terminal is in. Um, so whatever room you're in as the instructor is where the mic for this would go. So I would think you would leave yourself as an instructor, if you're doing this, you would leave yourself in the main room, send all the zoom people in a 
uh, and do breakout rooms um, and they can meet and then you can have your groups in here and I would possibly mute my mic as an instructor in, in here and then I mute it when you bring everyone back. But the mic would stay in the room that the instructor that the instructor is in. Any other questions? Don't be shy. Now's the time to ask them, guys. And if you have the question, someone else probably has it. Hey, Jason, I have a quick question. Yep. So I'm, I'm thinking about um, doing group work um, and having students in class and having students remote and wanting the discussions to also include the students who are remote. Um, so I'm, I think what I'm picturing is having just like the whole um, matrices of all the Brady Bunch faces on my screen, basically. Um, so if I'm sharing my screen, um, their faces would all be showing. And then whoever spoke, if I had it set, if I had it clicked on to um, adhere to the speaker or whatever, that they would pop up to people face to face to see when they were talking, correct? Not if you're sharing your screen. Well, yes. Generally, if you share your screen, not everyone shows up. Only a small snippet of people show up on the side. Whoever does talk will migrate up to the top until you can see them. Okay, so so, so we should be able to see who's speaking, I guess is my... Yes. Okay. So yep. They could actually, they could actively participate in um, a discussion that we were having in the face of stuff. Yes. I, we're semi doing it. We're semi doing it right now. Uh, I'm in the class. You know, oh, it yeah. wouldn't be much than, than what's going on. I'm in the class, and the only thing that we're not emulating is that I'm not sharing my screen. But if I'm sharing my screen, what should happen is the as the instructor or whoever's you know. The person who then starts talking will appear at the in the top of the side window of cameras you have. Cool. All right, awesome. Thank you, Jason. No problem. Uh, would you mind? I always have a backup plan for the first few weeks. I always have a backup plan. Um, I have my laptop top back that always has um, um, an extra microphone, or um, I don't have speakers in it, unfortunately, but. I always have an extra microphone in my bag. Um, you know, sometimes you might, I, I can't even tell you what might go wrong, unfortunately, just because we're in a lot of uncharted ter territory. And so, you know, you might have to do it where, you know what, the Zoom class doesn't happen. You just record um, the audio and you record the screen using Kaltura and post it into your Zoom classroom, uh, post it into your Moodle shell later. I have another question, Jason. Yeah. Is there any way to, this is Alex, uh, is there any way to um, save what's happening in the chat? Yeah. And uh, as part of the video or anything like that, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, sometimes good questions and stuff come up as part of the conversations and I would want whoever was watching the video or whatever later to be able to access that. You can't save it tied to the video, but you can save the chat. If you go into the chat window, um, the, there's three dots right above where you type in your chat message. You can click save oh. chat. It saves it at the time of your chatting. And so like, I wouldn't save it until you're at the very end. So, but it would save the whole chat, not just what it, we could actually see on the chat screen, correct? It saves the whole, it saves the whole chat log. And then where does it save that? Um, it saves it to your Zoom folder. When you click save, it does say show in folder. Um, and so it's buried in your documents. If you're on a PC, it's in the documents folder in Zoom in the title of the name of the meeting. Um, the CoLab 2 has uh, been able to save chats from past meetings as well. Um, by going into plumistate.zoom.us and finding the meeting in there. So if you ended up uh, forgetting to save the chat before you ended the Zoom meeting, 
um, there's the possibility of finding it uh, later on too. Thanks, Anna. And as Gail says, yeah, you can go in your settings um, and change and set up so it's safe to chat automatically. Uh, Laura brought up, um, we cannot prevent a student zooming from taking screenshots or anything like that. Yeah, unfortunately we can't because um, they're on their own computer. We don't control their computer and so we can't change it from, yeah, you know, we don't have any control of, of what they're doing on it. So unfortunately we cannot uh, do that. Uh, who cleans the equipment? I am not sure. I believe the, the um, janitorial staff will be cleaning cleaning stuff overnight, but as far as who cleans it from day to day, you know, in between classes, I, I do not know, unfortunately. I think maybe the expectation is that the um, user at the end of the class uh, cleans it and then the when you come into class, you clean it. So there's like a double cleaning going on, but that's just going off of what I've heard about like seats um, for students as well. So I would kind of assume it might be similar for, perhaps. All right, sorry, I had to respond to the team's message. Anything else, any other questions? Jason, again, apologies. Uh, this might've been covered because I came in late. Is there a benefit to Teams video over Zoom for this kind of classroom uh, work? Um, the, benefit of teams, uh, the benefit of Zoom is that you don't need a Zoom account and join to really, and you don't need to be in the team. Okay. Um, yeah, with okay. Zoom, you can send out a link. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Jesse asks, how's the Owl connected computer? Um, thank you, Jessica. That's another good point. Uh, the Owl connects the computer by USB. It's just a simple USB connection. You plug it in and the system should detect it automatically. And yeah, Jessica brought up the great point. Um, with Zoom, students can dial in too, where there's no dial in option to Teams. So, was this helpful? Do you guys kind of get an understanding of the of the two different types of classroom, you know, multimedia enabled classrooms? Excellent. All right, I'm gonna ask one more time. Any other questions? All right, Hannah, let's go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs>